Welcome to Across the Table in Week 9 of the 2011 Varsity Wildcat football season. We are live here from the Rady Dining Hall at St. Ignatius High School where the bell is perched. This is what they'll be playing for on Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock on the SIBN, the St. Xavier Bombers and the St. Ignatius Wildcats. I'm here with Greg Zeiten, I'm John Fanta, and Greg, the Wildcats came off an outstanding win considering the conditions that they were playing in in Apple Springs, New York to put them to 7-1. and one. They beat the St. Francis Red Raiders in New York. What a game. Yeah, for those of you who didn't watch or listen, uh, the weather conditions, to sum them up, were awful. Uh, you know, there were wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour. It was raining hard throughout the first half. And uh, the field, natural grass, with that much rain, just turned into a mud pit. Uh, you know, the teams, especially the Wildcats, had a difficult time getting their footing. We saw a really great game that going into it, we saw the Wildcats really dominating this team, a team that did not have much defense, really would have a problem with McVeigh and Williams, did not have much of a pass defense, and Akil Lynch shined, a great running back, probably the best running performance, the best running performance of this season. And the Wildcats, they were just able to get out of it with a one-point victory and really a motivational lifter as well. Oh, most definitely. But uh, starting at the beginning of that game, Wildcats really didn't look good. Uh, those first two drives for St. Francis, Akeel Lynch, in a uh, course of four runs, had two touchdowns. And it uh, didn't look good from there. You know, it ended with the first half ended with the Wildcats down 14 nothing. But in the third quarter, I'll tell you, Tim McVay and Eric Williams and the rest of that offense really stepped it up. Uh, Eric Williams had two tremendous touchdown passes despite the wind and uh, you know that tied the game up and then late in the fourth quarter Wildcats had a few chances they couldn't score uh, squandered some good field position late in the game but in overtime we were able to come out with it Tim McVeigh had a short touchdown run and Tim Shank I don't know how he did it but uh, into the 50 mile an hour win got the extra point through by that much so Wildcats were able to come out with a nice victory. And the drive of three and a half hours ended up being worth it for the Wildcats. They were really uplifted after that win. If you have not seen that touchdown pass yet, it is on our football page under articles. An amazing pass. One of the plays probably of the year so far, the play of this year. And the Wildcats went to 7-1. and They turned to the St. Xavier Bombers. It will be Saturday afternoon. This is a game that both teams Going in, they have had great seasons so far. St. X, only two losses on the year. They've lost to Cincinnati Moeller, number one in the state, and they lost to Trinity from Louisville, Kentucky, an out-of-state school. So they have really posed a challenge to many teams, coming off a victory over St. Edward, and this has just been a historic game for both these teams in the past couple of years. Two out of the four, two out of the last four games have been in overtime. Playmakers on both sides, almost identical this year. Yeah, looking at the series history a little bit, uh, the Bombers lead 9-8, to eight, but the Wildcats do have the edge in the playoffs. They've actually met twice in the state championship. Wildcats won both of those games. But uh, really, the Bombers have had the Wildcats number in the regular season. But uh, two very similar teams, you know, both Jesuit schools, both all boys, pretty big. And uh, two very similar teams, like you said. Looking at the Bombers, their playmaker is Connor Hunley. He's the running back. He uh, is basically their whole offense. They don't pass a lot. Last week, Hunley had uh, 160 rushing yards, and St. X has only two touchdowns. A matchup of two great running backs in McVeigh and Hunley. But going back to this rivalry, two Jesuit schools, two historic schools, have a lot of history together. And that's what they'll be playing for right behind us. The bell, which has yet to be named, it will be named at halftime of Saturday afternoon's game. And we talked to President Father Murphy of St. Ignatius High School. He talked about the significance of this bell and the significance of this rivalry. The uh, St. Ignatius-St. Xavier rivalry has been one that's uh, been going on a long time and I think it's the best football game in Ohio if not the country. You've got two very top level football programs, two great schools with uh, very old Jesuit traditions that uh, play the game the right way, that play hard, uh, that respect one another and uh, it's, I think it's a great thing that we're concretizing this rivalry with the, uh, by uh, having a trophy 
every year. And I think the bell is a, a great symbol of our unity uh, with them as a fellow, uh, a fellow Jesuit school, a very comparable Jesuit school. And so it's, it's uh, very exciting to enter a new phase in this rivalry. You know, for me, it's especially as exciting, uh, this rivalry, because I've been on the other side of it before. Um, I can remember uh, my last year at St. Xavier, which would have been uh, the fall of 2008, uh, St. Ignatius went down there and beat St. X in a very close game. And uh, I can remember the guys in dark blue and gold uh, jumping up and down all over the field, very excited, and the guys in light blue, and I was in light blue, uh, <laughs> feeling the disappointment of the defeat. But, uh, you know, the, the respect has always been there uh, between the two schools, and there's so many, you know, there's just so much uh, sharing back and forth. For example, when Coach Kyle was head of the Coach USA team, his defensive coordinator was Coach Specht, who's the head coach at St. Xavier. So those guys know one another and are great friends. Uh, the JV teams, the two JV teams uh, have a tradition that um, they stay at the houses of the other team uh, the night before the game. And uh, so those guys get to know one another throughout the years and form relationships. Uh, and then what we find when we go on the road um, and do reunions or area gatherings or at reunion is that um, guys will start talking about guys they meet from other Jesuit schools at college, specifically from St. X, and they'll figure out, wait, we just went to practically the same school, but just in a different location. And the fellowship that they have and the um, easy friendships that they jump into because they've been formed uh, by the same Jesuits, the same group of guys with the same philosophy, uh, um, the same theology, all, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, it's really neat to um, to watch the relationship develop uh, between these two schools, not only um, on the basis of the institutional basis, but also on a very interpersonal basis between coaches, between players. And uh, of course, uh, Tim Howe, their president, and I know one another very well and, and talk often. And uh, Tim's a great guy. Uh, and we have a friendly bet um, at, after uh, each game in our rivalry, Tim became president at St. X. Uh, the same time I became president here at Ignatius and after each game of our rivalry uh, we always have mass together and our friendly bet is that uh, the loser preaches and the winner gets to preside so uh, we're each one and one over the last two years and so uh, you know I'll prepare a homily for Saturday uh, hoping that we won't have to use it and uh, but in any case you know that mass is again kind of a symbol of our unity um, our, our common Catholic faith uh, brings us together um, in a very close way. Um, so uh, we're competitors, um, and to some extent we're rivals, but uh, first and foremost, we're brothers more than anything else. The idea for the naming contest came um, actually for from, it was a similar thing that happened decades and decades and decades ago, I think it was the 20s or 30s here at St. Ignatius. Originally, uh, we weren't the Wildcats, we were the Tornadoes. And they decided they wanted to change the name. And so uh, the I, the very same newspaper that we still publish today, um, held a contest and Wildcat was the winner. And uh, there's, there are stories in our archives, uh, literally the newspaper stories from the I in our archives about how that came about. And uh, we just thought, what a great way to name something. Uh, the students are certainly much more creative and uh, mentally agile than we are, so let's let them name it. And uh, you know, I understand the contest, uh, although a winner has not been picked yet, that there are uh, several hundred entries and some really, really good ones. And uh, it, it'll be cool to uh, name this thing name the bell in such a way that um, to you know carry the tradition of the game and carry the tradition of the two schools together. And Father Murphy, as he said, very anticipate, anticipating this rivalry on Saturday afternoon. Now, Greg, turn back to the game here. Any key matchups that you look for for the Wildcats and the Bombers? Well, when you think St. Xavier football, the first thing that comes to your mind is a great defense. 
once again, they've got a tremendous defense. They can shut down just about anyone's running game. Uh, good against the pass as well. So for the Wildcats, really, um, they're going to need some big plays, and they're going to need to take any points they can get. They can't afford to make mistakes because they're not going to get a whole lot of opportunities to score. And on the defensive end for the Wildcats, all year long they've shut down opponents' running games. Uh, they're going to have to do it once again. If they can shut down Connor Hundley, they've got a very good chance in this game because St. Xavier's passing game is not very good. Uh, last week their quarterback completed less than a third of his passes, uh, completed 5 of 16 for only about 40 yards. And uh, their running game is most of their offense, and if you can shut down Hundley, you can shut down their offense. Two historic schools and a great week and lots of things planned. They are doing a joint concert here, the JV football game. Players are staying at each other's houses. So just a great uh, story looking into this Saturday's game. It all centered around that. A lot of tickets sold for this one. It will be at Don Shula Stadium. John Carroll University, a lot of tickets sold for this one. We will have that for you. Murphy Bergen pregame show starting at 1.45 and then the game at 2. Let's hope another instant classic in the St. Xavier-St. Ignatius rivalry.